Thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Paper mache clay. The best to kind of... Uh it will end up on my face, on the ground, on the ceiling. Like I, the great thing about this is that I can like sand this down once it dries. I want to take it a little bit further and add some of this like jute cord. Hi friend, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Guess what? Today's a special day because I'm not working with cement. I feel like I do a lot of cement projects. This is like Loki turning into the cement channel, but no, today I'm gonna be working with a new material, a new one for me at least, and that is paper mache clay. Yeah, so it's paper mache, but it's like clay at the same time. I'm gonna get introduced to this material in this video and do a couple projects. Now I went online and did some research trying to find basically paper mache clay recipes. I've never done this before and I'm ultimately going to be trying this one out by Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com. She has a YouTube channel which I will put down below um, which is where I discovered her. Um, recipe and of course I will also put the recipe link down below and I, let me just tell you she seems like the sweetest lady out there and basically of course put my casa refined twist on it and create some really beautiful home decor now this video is going to be honestly very experimental for me one of the main ingredients for paper mache clay is well paper which could be newspaper recycled paper potentially some cardboard in this case I'm going to be using toilet paper as I have it on hand and it's easier to break down. Now I'm letting it sit in some water for a few minutes just so it breaks down. If this were thicker paper, I would use hot water and let it sit for about an hour or two. So we're just gonna wait for that toilet paper a little bit longer just so it breaks down a little bit. I tried my best to kind of, um, you know, break it down. Next up, we're also going to be needing some joint compound. I have like the big five gallon bucket um, just because I use it so much, but there's also like the smaller ones. It's relatively inexpensive. Joint compound is used for like uh, when you have gypsum wall board or drywall, um, the little gaps, they use it to kind of fill those gaps in. At least here in the States, I don't know if it's used around the world. Now this is trial and error and it might take a couple tries before getting it right but basically the recipe calls for draining out some of the water but not all of it as we want it to not be clumpy. Okay we got our toilet paper in there and now we're going to do one cup of joint compound. This is already pre-mixed. The recipe also calls for glue today. I'm using Elmer's glue wall, not the school version. I think Mod Posh would also work but I find this to be a little bit more economical plus I have it on hand. All right, and then the recipe also calls for just some white old flour um, like you use for baking. Now this is going to also determine sort of the thickness of the clay. The more flour, the thicker it'll, it'll be. So to create sort of texture and things like that, the fewer amount of flour or the less flour, it's gonna be more like a paste. Upon adding the flour, I mixed it up with the hand mixer for a couple of minutes. I gotta say though, this stuff did not taste very good. I'm just kidding. This is not edible. Kind of like really thick frosting, um, the consistency. I am going to basically cover a whole bunch of things with this material because I want to make things look like pottery or some sort of like age distress clay piece or something like that. It just depends on how this dries ultimately. But this is the first piece that I'm gonna cover with. This is an old um, metal bowl that I actually thrifted a while ago. I mean, it has some words on here, which you know how I feel about words. Together with friends and family is always the happiest place to be. Well, those are some sweet words, but we don't need that on a bowl. So I'm gonna cover this up, plastic, um, like butter knife and basically frost this like a cake. So I'm gonna start off with the bottom side first. I think in the end, I will have to make another or add another like coat, like a thicker coat, um, but this is gonna be the base coat and my goal is just to cover it basically. By the way, I am not good at frosting a cake. I make a mess. Like, like if you just see me frosting a cake or putting jam on toast or something, it will end up on my face, on the ground, on the ceiling. Like I, I get it everywhere. Like if someone could please explain to me how to properly spread something, cause I don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna use my fingers now and Uh, 
I'm going to go ahead and cover this up so that I can use this later. Um, so I think I'm going to put like a wet paper towel to maintain moisture and then like plastic wrap tightly sealed. Or not tightly, but just making sure that it doesn't get exposed to air. Okay, so it is the following day. Um, it's actually not fully dried. It's still actually wet on the inside and stuff. She said that it was gonna take a while to dry. So I'm actually gonna put this near the space heater um, just to speed up the drying process because I'm gonna be adding a second coat. Um, but I can already tell you that this is actually really nice because it has this texture. In the meantime, let's get started on the second project. Let's work with this. So for this project, I'm gonna be working with this glass vase or more of a bowl, I would say. Actually thrifted this a while ago and you know what it's fine there's nothing wrong with it but I want to transform this make this look like pottery but rather than getting to the clay part first let's add some interest to this this rope I'm going to cut this rope down and kind of add some detail sort of like a ribbed effect actually first I want to create like a thick rim at the top so I will glue I was going for a really thick neck, so I glued this, wrapped it around a few times, and yes, you bet I burnt myself more than once with the hot glue gun. This ends up taking longer than expected, but I'm feeling optimistic about the result for this one. I feel like it's going to turn out better than what it looks like right now. <laughs> You know, it's coming along quite nicely and I do have to say it's kind of reminding me of a lantern for some reason. I don't know, do you see it? I kind of see it. Either way, I'm so excited to clay this up, but first it's time to eat. I gotta say, on days like these, it can be a little bit hectic as I am working on other projects, business things, so HelloFresh makes my cooking a lot easier. Okay, so today we have ourselves barbecue pineapple flatbreads. I love pineapple. Like, I really love pineapple. We also have buffalo cauliflower tacos and pasta primavera. Okay, today I'm gonna make the flatbreads or maybe the pasta. You know, this year I'm trying to cut back on takeout and delivery just because it can get a little pricey, but I also want to be a little bit more mindful of what's going into my diet. And HelloFresh now has 40 weekly recipes to choose from, so you can say bye-bye to that recipe rut and treat yourself and family to new delicious flavors every week. I wish there was smell vision so you could smell this. It smells incredible. No matter your lifestyle or meal preferences, HelloFresh has recipes sure to please everyone at your table. From calorie smart to carb smart to veggie or family friendly, you'll always find something even for the pickiest eaters to enjoy. You're going to want to try this for yourself. Go to HelloFresh.com, enter code GASAREFIND65 to get 65% off your order and free shipping. Yes, free shipping. HelloFresh.com, enter code GASAREFIND65. And thanks again to HelloFresh for partnering in today's video. Cheers. And back to the bowl we go here. I'm adding our first layer of cake frosting, basically. <laughs> Um, with this paper mache clay i'm finding that when i rub it with my hands like it sticks to the bowl but also sticks to my hands but then going in with the little butter knife afterwards smooths it out so here's our first layer okay so i still have a little bit of clay left over um here i'm gonna make another batch of clay but like a thicker one for the second coat um but before that let me just use this up on this little guy right here. So this is a vase that, again, thrifted a while ago. I have like a little thrift stash of things that I'll eventually get to. This one's a pretty cute uh, glass vase, has these handles. It's gonna look very cute. Um, and again, making it look like pottery. Texture is a little thick. I don't like too much, uh, like too rough of a texture, but the great thing about this is that I can like sand this down once it dries. The unfortunate thing is that this takes a long time to dry, so I'm just gonna take this over to the space heater so that it dries quickly and we can work on the second batch for the bowl. First layer of the paper mache clay is now dry, well mostly dry on the first one. So I'm going to make up another batch of this one. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker, I will say. So I added the same ingredients, but I went a little bit heavier with the flour. Again, applying it with my hands, rubbing it on on there, being very generous, embracing the texture and imperfection, um, and kind of trying my best to cover up the rims because that's a little bit challenging. 
I also added this detail to the rim of the bowl using my knife. I think it further adds to the illusion of it being made out of clay. And of course the other bowl got a coat on the inside and into the dryer it goes. And our little vase with handles gets a second coat. So I let the paper mache clay dry. It's been probably over 24 hours at this point and it's like really like rock hard. It's actually impressive. I'm very happy with it. Now before I do some painting I want to do a little bit of light sanding because there are some areas where it's just like very sharp. I think it's just like the fibers so a little bit of sanding. I'm gonna use 60 grit. This might be a little too coarse and then I have some paint here that I want to basically make this like I said look like pottery and then maybe add some like nice details you know i'm genuinely surprised by how hard the clay has dried because it's going through my sandpaper rather quickly but now we're ready to move on to painting i'm going to start off with our little guy our little vase again the goal here is to make these look like pottery or aged pottery even and here i'm going in with some acrylic paint that's really watered down i don't know why i keep watering down my acrylic paint so much i feel like it just doesn't help so here i'm going in with khaki paint and some dark brown paint will start producing an aged effect. All right, so I have my vase, looks like stoneware now. Um, I wanna take it a little bit further and add some of this like jute cord that I picked up and basically kind of create a little bit of a design with it. Um, not braiding, but like, I don't know, do something interesting with it. I think it's gonna just make it look more, more special, more unique. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm kind of just going by the fly here. I don't know how to weave per se, but what I did was I tied it around the neck and the base. And then I just went around the entire vase with the cord and kind of just faked it till I made it. And then at the top, this is what it ended up looking like. I don't really know if this is the proper way to do it, but I do love the look of it. I think it just adds to the realness of this. Maybe we might fool a couple people like, hey, did you dig that off of the ground somewhere? Like, ooh, really cool. I don't know. Here's our final result. Let me know what your thoughts are on this cute little vase. But I'm not done quite yet because I still have this bowl. Initially, my inspiration for this bowl was sort of those ones from our age or, you know, those trending paper mache bowls. They're often a lighter color, like, you know, like a beige or such. Here, I opted for a darker version. So I painted it dark brown, then I layered in some green. This adds to the patina, to the aged quality. Once that layer dried, I went in even further because the more the better. Here, I am using darker brown and then I went with some black, using a paper towel, rubbing it on, rubbing it off, getting my hands dirty and staining my new white shirt either way here is how it's turning out it just feels more ornate not ornate just more realistic once that dried here's the final result adding a couple of foam uh, branches and this is the final result let me know what your thoughts are The trilogy continues as I still have one more bowl. The direction for this one is going to be a little bit of a lighter color because with the added details around, I find that lighter colors reveal or emphasize those details. I think boring beige is going to be just fine for this one. So giving it a couple coats of that. I feel like this was the right color choice, but for some reason, this paint was just not doing it for me today. So I opted to spray paint this with the stone paint. Not only does this add more texture, but it creates some variation in the color. It does take a little bit longer to dry, but I'm very happy with the end result. No one, I mean, no one's gonna know this is actually glass and rope, or maybe they will, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts are on this cute little bowl. Not bad for a couple of dollars.
These are so nifty. I love the way that these turned out. I feel like this material has lots of potential. Let me know in the comments below if I should explore paper mache clay further. Also, let me know which of the projects was your favorite. And I also want to thank HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out that link down below to get your discount. Seriously, it's so good. It makes my life so much easier. And thank you for watching. Check out these recommended videos at the end of the screen. I've done lots of DIYs that I think you're going to enjoy. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.